Hi everyone, a big shout out to Peter C whom I had a good chat with and it kind of reminded me the fact that I have not done the LibreLink app review. Yep, some may not find it uh, important but I think I can share with you some of my views on the app and on overall how the sensor uh, application has been. So basically, I have a video which I've attached a link up here which I've done for the uh, unboxing and explanation of how to install the sensor. So you can have a look up there or go on to the description below to see that video. But today, I'm going to share with you how I feel about the sensor and also some of the app functions. Okay, so before we get into the app itself, I want to share with you how I feel about the sensor usage. First, it lasts only for 14 days, but it captures everything within that 14 days. Uh, one important fact that I need to highlight is that you have to use the application to capture the sensor data at least once every 8 hours because that's the maximum capacity you can capture, 8 hours duration. So if you move past that 8 hour time frame, Whatever you have, um, like for example, you're supposed to capture the data uh, at 6 a.m. in the morning because your last capture was 10 p.m. Uh, the night before. So if you did not capture any data at 6 a.m. and instead you capture at 7 a.m., the data from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. will not be captured. Instead, only from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., the data will be captured. To me, that is not a big deal because at night, my glucose levels are pretty stable. So I'm not worried about that. It's for people who may have issues during the day where they are unable to capture within an 8 hours time frame. Or if they forget, then they may not be able to get full data that one. But that said, I've not encountered any problem. And there is also a reminder function in the app that will you can control and reminds you that, oh, it's time to capture that data. Uh, or give you gentle reminders. So I think that is quite helpful. So in overall, I feel that the uh, sensor itself is, uh, when you apply it on, it's um, slightly discomfort, slight discomfort in the initial part. Uh, and when we sleep, when I sleep, I tend to want to be mindful of how I place my arm when I sleep in the, with the fear that it might drop out. But I place a surgical tape over the sensor to protect it even more. So it has not slipped in any way. So I think it's just a worry um, on my part. But otherwise, it's it's quite a good monitoring system and it helps to capture what sort of uh, uh, glucose levels you have throughout the entire day. All right, now let's get on to the app. Okay, now let's talk about the app, the LibreLink app itself. After you've downloaded it from the App Store, when you go in, you are either greeted by the fact that you need to register and also the next step will be how to apply the sensor. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna, not gonna show this. I'm gonna show you the functions of the app. So after you register at your home page, you should be able to see the logbook function. Click on the logbook function and whenever you capture any data, it will all be recorded in this logbook on a daily basis. So now you can see I have Let's say from the 8th of April, I have all these scans that I did. This shows you all your glucose levels. And if I were to click, if you want to see the general trend on a chart-like basis, I'll click on one of the readings and it shows you uh, the overall general trend for the entire day. So when you scan the app, you can actually go in and key in specific information like how many grams of carbs you had that day. What do you do? Did you like have any insulin or did you exercise? And there's a comment section where you can indicate what you have eaten just prior to that scan or just to give you some notes so that you can remember oh, what kind of food kind of like uh, will increase your glucose level. So for example, now I have this which I did the cabbage soup with stock, salmon with teriyaki sauce, cauliflower and it did increase my um, glucose levels up a little bit but you can see the general trend is after that it come it came down so it really shows you what sort of food will kind of 
spike up your glucose level and it's a very good tool to monitor so you can actually see what food will uh, trigger or what are the ones that would trigger your glucose levels and this is good for you to take note so that in future when you have any food you can be more mindful that it will raise or not increase your or lower I mean uh, it doesn't affect your glucose level so that's for the logbook so that is a good way to keep all the uh, information stored now we will look at uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier there's a reminder function this reminder function lets you set reminders so that you will not miss any scans okay now let's talk about daily patterns basically daily patterns uh, is an overall snapshot of the entire period of the testing uh, which shows you how your glucose level fluctuates within a specific time of the day okay not so helpful for me um, but anyway that's information there and then we have time in target so it means how long you have your glucose level has been at that specific uh, level for the throughout these 14 days so for example in this uh, this graph here you can see that I have clocked 83% of my glucose levels between 3.9 to 5.5 millimoles per liter so and this kind of shows that okay I'm actually in a good range so to speak and if you have high ranges that will also tell you that okay you know you spend most of your glucose level at the higher range or not but uh, it's a good tool for you to see um, low glucose events shows you how many times your glucose has dipped below not recommended levels again for tracking purposes uh, average glucose I think this is helpful it kind of shows you that you have been maintaining your glucose levels uh, well and you do, should not see uh, huge differences um, daily graph we don't have enough information uh, estimated A1c this is the hemoglobin A1c reading which uh, usually it takes data for about three months when you go for a blood test but in this app it collates 14 days of information and gives you an an indication of what is your average uh, glucose so I think this estimated A1c is helpful um, to show that you are on the correct side or wrong side and you should be taking steps to reduce this because A1c is a more accurate average reading of your glucose level then sensor usage the sensor usage will show you uh, how many scans you've done uh, th throughout the entire period uh, on average how many scans you do per day and how much of the sensor data captured uh, in this case 16% uh, is because I've already stopped using it for some time if I've consistently captured data consistently within that 14 days this number should be 100% okay so if you want to share the information you can just tap on share uh, it will allow you to send this data out via whatsapp or you can even save it or print it out for storage purposes okay so i hope this has been helpful uh, yes it's a bit dry but i just want to give you a glimpse of what the app can do and hopefully you can explore on your own and use it as a tool to help you to identify things that will identify foods or even exercises that will increase your glucose level so to keep you or in fact to help you to keep a watch on what will affect your glucose level and hopefully leading to better health